The final step in preparing the presentation after editing and proofing the video will be to process the final product. I'll show how I use Studio as an intermediate step in post-production for a Master H.264, a high-quality 1080p version for YouTube, and a 720p video for Facebook. I'll explain why I follow this path. In the last video, I mentioned that I use Pinnacle Studio as an intermediate step in a final render or final product. And the reason for that is twofold. One is the audio and the other are the formats that I export in. My audio, for the most part, is being recorded in Adobe Audition. And while I'm recording in Adobe Audition, I can clean up the audio, run my effects rack, normalize it, all of that sort of thing. Here recently, I've been taking the raw audio file and moving over into Pinnacle Studio. And then I will export that without doing anything else to the audio. I know there's an audio mixer in Pinnacle Studio. I don't use that because after I've exported something, out of Pinnacle Studio, the audio may lose some of its volume, and I do an adjustment, and I'm going to explain that here in just a second. All right, if I go to export, I talked about the options earlier. Now, in version 16 and 18, when I went to the presets, I would have a variety of presets here uh, that were specifically noted for YouTube. And for, I think, in version 18, it might have said something about Facebook. I know YouTube was there. Not only that, in version 16, I believe there was an option to export and upload directly to a YouTube account immediately. So you could actually have your credentials saved in Pinnacle Studio, and you could upload that directly. That never worked for me. So what I started doing was using their presets to send out or format the video for YouTube or whatever. And then, of course, YouTube would do their, their thing on the other end. Here recently, since I'm putting everything out for a 1080p, that's the only option I really use coming out of Pinnacle Studio. And it works. It does fine. I mentioned in the last video that my audio has already been processed through the DAW that I'm using, which right now is Adobe Audition. Before that, I used Audacity. So I'm going to go ahead and I do an export on this. And then once the export is done, I pull that file into Premiere Pro. And the reason why I do that is, first of all, some of the audio can lose some volume. It doesn't happen that often anymore, but it can happen. If that does, I don't use any of the really advanced audio controls. The only thing I do is I come over here to the timeline after I've done all my editing, and I'm going to go to audio gain, and I normalize this to minus 3 dB, which I've already done on this particular file. I hit OK, and then that boosts the audio levels up to an acceptable value. The other reason why I use Premiere Pro when I do a final render is so that I can have the options of exporting in particular formats. And in Premiere Pro, there's, there's tons of presets in here. I'm going to do a high-quality 1080p. I'm going to do a YouTube 1080p full HD, and I'm going to do a Facebook 720p HD. I'm, I'm going to send all three of those to the media encoder. Once they're done, all I have to do is upload them to either YouTube or Facebook. High quality 1080p version is going to be one that I'm going to keep for myself as an archive copy. And then later on, if I need another copy of the video, I can go ahead and recreate that from this. I don't have to go back and do anything else. So that's the reason why I do this. I've also noticed in Pinnacle Studio that the 
audio can be not only a little bit low, it can get a little bit fuzzy. If I needed to, I can actually go ahead and edit this over in Adobe Audition again if I need to. That's rare. So most of the time, the video is going to be really usable. This is just a final step that I use that helps me streamline the final renders a little bit. It makes everything a little bit faster. And I get to adjust the audio levels after it comes out of studio. Because studio doesn't do the best sometimes with the audio. So that's it. Once I've done that, everything is complete. And I'm going to go ahead and upload to either YouTube or Facebook or both. And I'm going to archive the other copy either locally or sometimes I load it up to my website and use it there. Moving some of my presentations from PowerPoint over to video. Really, again, Pinnacle Studio is the best tool that I've found to be able to do that with. That's the series on creating a PowerPoint-style animated presentation, so hopefully this is helpful for you.